Gnostic, and uh, in celebration of the San Pedro video that I made reaching 100,000 views, I decided to remake it because since I made that video, uh, I've learned some new tricks uh, to make it a little bit faster and a little bit easier. So do me a favor, hit the like button, share, subscribe, support us on Patreon, and let's get to work. So the dose that is recommended by most people is 10 to 18 inches per person. And again, it's going to depend a lot on the variety of cactus. Even uh, within species of cactus, there's a lot of variation in potency. But um, a piece about this thick and this long should be about sufficient for a strong dose per person. Aside from it being a little bit more quick and efficient as far as extracting the totality of the alkaloid out of the cactus, uh, a lot of people say that you know it's, it's wasted effort to remove the skin and to get the core out of the center. Uh, but I, I very strongly disagree with that. My experience has been that if you consume it with the skin, there's a lot more purging. In fact, I've seen a lot of people uh, are totally unable to keep the uh, cactus down without removing the skin. A lot of people will also remove the uh, spines. I don't do that. I don't find it to be necessary, but it's, it's, it's worthy of noting that with Lafafara or peyote, uh, Lafafarine, which is a very toxic alkaloid, uh, tends to concentrate around the tufts and so this removal of the spines may be for the same purpose um, but in my experience removing the core and the outer skin which is very very difficult to do without freezing I'll show you guys um, and you can see where it's dry here I can kind of get it off but it's really really hard so um, that's the reason for freezing the cactus uh, as you'll see in a minute it just peels right off I don't really follow a very precise regimen when I'm making the cactus I don't feel like there's really much point due to the variation in the potency and just the, the general process. I mean, when you're making it in the jungle, you're not measuring anything. It's just a matter of cooking the material until you've removed the alkaloids and then concentrating it down so that you don't have to drink a large cup. Um, but for those of you that uh, want to be more particular, two liquid ounces of white vinegar per liter will give you about the right pH for pulling the alkaloids out of the cactus. And the ratio of water to cactus that people usually recommend is about equal but in my experience it's just way too much uh, a lot of times uh, the cactus has so much water in it that after I blend it I only need to add just a tiny bit so um, my uh, general MO is just to make sure that the cactus is covered with enough water that the material is not touching the bottom of the pan and there's sufficient water to extract the alkaloids out into the water and uh, one of the differences from the last video about this I made is that I'm using white vinegar now uh, primarily because if you use limes, uh, the lime juice is concentrated. It doesn't evaporate away like vinegar does. So the vinegar does its job and then it evaporates out of the medicine. And so it is uh, fine to just use the whole cactus. A lot of people do that. Um, if you look inside, you'll see there is a thin green layer. And that is where most people claim that the majority of the alkaloids are. This inner circle is the core, which contains uh, pretty much no alkaloid at all. Uh, somebody brought to my attention that some analysis say that the majority of the alkaloids actually is uh, in the pulp just because there's more of it and that there's really nothing more than chlorophyll concentrated in the outer layer. In Ecuador, it's not unusual to come across giant salvage scenes like this or even you know, a half ton of San Pedro in a dumpster. So I still just use the outer green layer, but those of you that are paying a few hundred dollars for a few feet, definitely going to get more mileage if you use the white pulp as well. So while we have this out, I just want to demonstrate how much more difficult it is. Well, this one's actually being pretty easy, but peeling the skin off is laborious and difficult. But if you have frozen it, which makes the cactus much uglier, um, the skin you can just pop it off and it peels off very very easily and then you just want to go through and remove any I mean it looks like we have like a spider nest in this cavity here we have some rotten cactus in the back so I'll just remove all of that and then what we want to do is peel the majority of the cactus away from the inner core. When you freeze the cactus, sometimes the structure of the core will break down to the point where you can't just pull it out. Sometimes you can. When that happens, you can just drag the knife and just kind of stretch the material that you want to keep. It comes off really easily once it's been frozen. 
well, it was coming off really easily. And then this kind of skeletal part, uh, these actually look really cool when they dry. Um, I wish I had one to show you guys. But this fibrous part, you just go ahead and discard. So after you have chopped the cactus into blender sized chunks, if you don't have a blender, uh, it's, it's okay. It's just that the, the smaller the pieces are, the more alkaloid you're gonna get out uh, more quickly. Um, if you are not going to blend it, you can just cut chunks maybe this big all the way around would be fine too and just throw them in a pot and it's just going to take a lot longer so just place some of the cactus in the blender um, just a splash of vinegar not super precise it's not necessary to be um, and then we're going to add just enough water to allow the cactus to blend without getting stuck. It's pretty quick. And then we'll add it to our pot over here next to the ayahuasca and the ayahuasca paste <laughs> that is already on the stove. That will be a, a video coming soon, so keep your eye out for that one. So, there's a little bit of argument about how long you need to cook it, uh, what temperatures are safe. The reality is the alkaloids in the cactus are not going to be destroyed by heat. And anyone that is um, inclined to argue with me about that, I, I have watched people, uh, that some traditions they boil for 18 days. So, it, it, on, on an open fire with no... You can't, you can't turn the flames down on it. They just put it right on huge flames, right? It's boiling hard for weeks. So uh, the evidence of my senses tells me, uh, aside from chemistry, <laughs> confirmation from chemistry, the mescaline has a, a very high uh, evaporation temperature. And you don't need to worry about that. Um, so we're going to cook the cactus uh, in the water, occasionally adding water as it evaporates off until it turns kind of brownish and uh, I'll show you guys what that looks like in a little while. The trick is going to be after the first boil, uh, after you drain it, squeeze it through, um, as you guys will see in a little while, you'll do it again, and you just continue washing, you don't really have to boil, continue washing the cactus, uh, and at the end you'll just taste it, and if it's really bitter, then you know that you can keep washing out more alkaloids. All right, so after you have boiled the pulp for three or four hours, I like to drain it through a metal strainer first to get the majority of the liquid out and then from there one of these cloth coffee filters works just great just pour it in there it won't really do the work on its own I spin and spin and spin and then you just kind of crush it all out until you get no more liquid. And then you're usually going to reboil the pulp at least one more time. And then, in order to see when all of the alkaloids have been removed, the pulp is not bitter at all, so I won't. Uh, reboil it anymore. We're done. We'll cook it down into a black, syrupy, um, thick, horrific tasting uh, beverage. <laughs> and um, the, the potency is very difficult to determine. Uh, all of the cactus varieties have a wide range of potency. Um, even for different parts of individual cactus can vary very much in potency. Um, so really all you can do is, you know, cook it down. Uh, if it's still pourable, then one ounce probably won't be too much. So you can start with that and, um, again, lots of respect, caution, because if you overdo it... You can find yourself start grading naked and mad and the duration of that can be 20 hours or more because it lasts forever, so you really need to be careful. After you've strained the yellow-greenish uh, tea sort of... Uh, affair um, boiling out the water until it's about this color uh, which is nearly opaque um, it's very very dark 
it's going to be extremely potent. So one ounce um, is usually not too much for most people. Three ounces is almost always too much for just about everyone. So, um, as I've said, it's very, very difficult to know the potency of cactus. It varies a lot from cactus to cactus. Uh, the uh, process of cooking it down, I mean, the, the, the concentration of water in the tissue of the cactus is going to vary depending on how long it's been stored. Um, so, you really do have to just uh, cook it down until it's... If you get it too thick, you might not be able to swallow it because it does get grosser and grosser as it concentrates. Uh, and another option is to cook it down to um, this hash-like uh, substance, which is a resin, and all of the moisture pretty much has been evaporated. And uh, again, the potency of this stuff can vary pretty dramatically. So um, you might start with eating a gram or two. Uh, I wouldn't do any more than that until you get a sense of the potency of it. So thanks a lot for watching and keep an eye out for uh, the next uh, plant medicine preparation video is going to be ayahuasca.